What's up everybody? Brian Peacock back. Epic Outdoor Adventures. More gardening stuff for you. Tis the season right now. Here in Western North Carolina we're in the end of the first week of June and tomatoes are starting to grow here. We can't plant until Mother's Day about mid-May here for our warm weather crops. Um, so we have a, a shortened season than a lot of you guys and a little behind schedule here. So um, uh, don't threat, this is just some diatomaceous earth on these um, tomatoes and peppers here. Uh, we had a little bit of an aphid uh, infestation, which we do every year um, early. Uh, we usually get them maybe once or twice. Um, we end up taking care of those with um, uh, water, a little bit of dish Dawn detergent soap, and uh, just a little drop of oil as a, a binder in the, um, in the water mix. Um, spray underneath all the leaves that has the aphids. Um, aphids tend to be um, red or green here. Um, I think some of them could be white as well. Uh, but we get the green and we get the red ones. Um, so um, they're really small and they're soft bodied bugs. Uh, you can smash them really easy. Uh, a water hose will spray them off, which I do uh, after I spray them with the uh, with the soap mixture um, so uh, but yeah I'll take care of those aphids uh, and then I put a little bit of diatomaceous earth on top um, basically what diatomaceous earth is is is, is just a uh, silica uh, based um, powder uh, so it's got some really sharp edges on it uh, so not good stuff to breathe in so you want to uh, if, if you're inside going to use this use a, a mask or something uh, definitely don't want to inhale this stuff okay um but it's sharp to soft-bodied bugs um like aphids okay so uh aphids are soft-bodied bugs and uh, they don't like this stuff so this is just a preventative measure just to make sure that they're gone after two treatments of the soap and hose spraying them all off i don't see any more on there um but uh you know uh, how the aphids get on your plants is the ants um, ants tend to not be harmful to your garden uh, for the most part uh, they can be but most of the time they're not uh, they actually can be beneficial to your soil aerate the soil things like that but if you have an over infestation of ants or if you have fire ants now uh, you might not want them in your garden okay now on to what I'm actually going to be doing here all right I'm going to show you guys how to prune these tomato plants and fight blight and diseases in your tomato plants, okay? Uh, this is a raised bed here. Um, I also grow them in uh, containers. These are 20 gallon containers here. And um, I also do uh, the 10s or 15s down there and I also do some in 5 gallon buckets now in my five gallon buckets i will use a determinant tomato plant which uh tends to be smaller and bushy and uh, it dies off pretty fast so it has a determined life cycle um, an indeterminate tomato plant which these are uh, tend to uh, continually grow until uh, weather kills them or you, you stop them from growing um, they will grow very big very tall and you can vine these out um, just by pulling suckers and um, uh, defoliating it as it goes um, so and you can also get more fruits that way so um, this method here that I'm showing you today is for indeterminate tomato plants now when you go buy tomato plants usually it'll tell you on the little tag if it's an indeterminate or a determinate um, if not you can look it up look the name up it up on Google and uh, it will tell you in there also so um, I've already pruned this one uh, for the right now and um, you know we'll continually prune it but basically what I want to do all right is I want to start pulling off branches all right at the bottom so you can see right here where I pulled off 
branch, pulled off branch here, pulled off branch over here. So all these low branches, we're gonna take off and remove. Now we're not gonna overdo it, and we're only gonna do uh, two, three, four at a time, um, and let it grow a little taller as it gets a little bit bigger. We'll start to take these off here, and we'll continually raise the bottom of this plant up away from this soil, all right? Um, the blight disease that starts killing tomato plants, which you get all that yellowing and brown on the end of your leaves, and you get little brown marks and black marks all along your stem, and uh, your, your plant just will stop growing, it'll turn all yellow and sickly looking, um, and, and that's a blight. There's an early blight, and then there's a regular blight. Um, regular blight can be uh, fixed if you catch it early, and um, you, you treat on a regular basis. Um, early blight, if it gets it pretty good, it tends to kill your plants off pretty fast. Okay, so um, uh, I'll go into the differences of those in another, another uh, video. All right, so, uh, so we removed the lower branches, okay? And we're going to remove suckers, okay? I'm gonna show you what suckers are, okay? Make sure you can see, all right. Right here we have the main stem, okay, big thick stem. Right here we have the branch that comes off, all right, and in that little armpit right there is the sucker. So here is the sucker and it will grow another, it'll grow another main stem just like this and it'll do the same thing. So what it happens is it bushes this plant out and it'll get really big and wide and you can't get into it and the airflow isn't very good and uh, it'll just be a mess okay so we want to remove these suckers I just pinch them with my thumbnail and we're gonna remove all of them along the plant all right if you can see right here where this plant split off okay right there this was a sucker that I left, okay? I usually always leave one sucker, and that way it branches into two, two branches, all right? So we're basically gonna grow two plants out of one. We're splitting it down early, all right? And we're gonna, I use a bamboo um, posts that I just chopped down on the side of the road. Uh, if it's on private property, make sure you have permission. And, uh, but I will grow these two uh, vines that I will call them all right they're not a vine but they will grow like a vine and I will split them apart just a little bit and um, we'll continually take off the suckers on both of these vines so here's a sucker over here here's a sucker down here here's this here's a big sucker back up in here Wait a minute. Let me see if I can get you. right here it's a big sucker all right and we're gonna take that guy on out of there now, one thing about suckers, all right? A sucker is another tomato plant, all right? You can reroot this. So if you stick this down into uh, a little pot, all right, stick it down in there. You can even use some um, uh, root tone, uh, that's like a root hormone that stimulates root growth. Um, this will grow roots. It'll start growing a new tomato plant, all right? If you look really closely, you can see all those little hairs on those stems and every one of those hairs will become a root once it's under the ground all right and it does take a few weeks for it to get going and and root um, humidity is best to keep it in maybe dome it um, with a uh, some kind of a bug eggs on my plant um, the uh, oh yeah um you want to dome it with um some kind of a dome uh with some holes in the top just so it can breathe but that'll keep the humidity in until it roots uh don't set this out in bright sun you want to put it in um some shade or even take it indoors uh you don't need any light on it really um no strong light definitely if you do have light just indoor incandescent or fluorescent light would be fine um, it's not really going to take the light to grow, it's going to try to grow roots. So it's just going to sit there, it's going to wilt a little bit, it might turn yellow, 
Um, don't give up on it because it'll come back usually. All right. Sometimes you fail at it. Uh, sometimes they do die. So uh, just, you know, if you're going to try this, do maybe 10 of them. That way you have a good chance of success. Okay. And I'll go into uh, cloning uh, tomato plants in another video as well. So now, now that we've removed the bottom branches, all right, we're in here removing suckers. All right, here is, let's see, right there. Here's another sucker. This is a big one. See, I've let it grow. All right, it's right there in that armpit. All right, so if you let them grow bigger, it's a little more unhealthy for them to take off because now you leave a big, uh, big wound on the plant. All right, see that big open spot, and uh, that will uh, leak juices. Uh, it can get diseases this way. Uh, it also uh, sends out scent for uh, certain bugs to come eat it because now it's wounded. And um, you know, bugs usually attack plants that aren't healthy or uh, not as healthy. So uh, you good, really healthy plants have a really good tolerance against bugs just on their own. Okay, so I'm gonna take off all these suckers. Here to this side. Let's see if I have any more. Yes, I do. I have one over here. Here I have one. Take that one off. See, and these are little ones. And uh, this is usually the best time to take them off, unless you're trying to clone them. Uh, these are a little small to clone. All right, now that we've taken them off, I'm going to space this branch out a little bit because it's up in the other one. And we're going to spread these apart as they grow, uh, grow a little more, all right? We'll spread them apart, and I'll get another stake in here for the other side, and uh, that's it, all right? So, uh, back here, I haven't done this one, so we're going to um, come and do the same thing. Now, you can see I have three, three stalks here coming off, and uh, I'm just going to take one of these off, all right? So... Snap it off, don't pull it. You will pull the roots. Goodness. Alright, there we go. Now, this is a big sucker. I could have been just three plants planted at once, too. So, uh, but we're just going to get rid of it. This would make a great plant to clone, um, taking them bottom leaves off and then, you know, putting it in some soil. But we're not saving it today. I have tons of, tons of plants. Here's a oh, oh, watermelon. Now, remove all these branches down here. Remove these branches here and suckers. All the low ones. And come up to here too. Take these off. All right, there we go. So, we've taken them off. I'm going to remove these and take them out of the garden. Okay, now you can see that we. I'm just going to take this one off. All right, now we've lifted up that bottom. We're taking off the suckers. Just one right here. And them armpits. Another one over here. All right, that's good. Now we got two branches on that one. Come back to this one, do the same thing. All right, this is how we prune the plants. Here's a watermelon. These are all, uh, these are all, um, from last year. From my watermelon sitting here and rotten over. There's a big patch of them back there. I have quite a few of them that I left, uh, that we'll, we'll try to get some watermelon off of them. I seriously doubt it because we don't have a long enough season for a good watermelon. Alright, so this one's just full. And uh, you can see how the leaves are all just laying on the ground. That's a great way for your plant to get blight. All right. Um, another way to fight blight is to mulch. Uh, put straw down, mulch. You can use grass clippings, leaf litter, all kinds of stuff to put in here. Here as a mulch. And uh, I would do at least two, three inches of mulch, and that will prevent this soil from splashing up when it does rain as well. Uh, you can also use black um, garden fabric, 
uh, as well, although I don't really like that stuff as much. So uh, we're gonna take all these low branches off here. This is a sucker, we're gonna get rid of it. Low branches off. We're gonna get rid of this. This and this. We're just chopping this plant. Oh, the heck. You can use the scissors. You can use uh, gardening shears. Um, it's probably better to cut it rather than break it. it makes a cleaner cut. Um, but I don't have any scissors right here. I just use my thumbs. All right, take this one off. Yes, sir. And uh, I'll take this one off too. And maybe this one here too. All right. Now I'm gonna take, see this is a blossom set. All right, blossom set. I'm gonna take this first set off to promote more growth. Get a big root ball. All right, you always wanna plant tomatoes really deep. Deeper the better, the bigger the roots the bigger the fruits. All right, so there we go. We trimmed up our tomatoes. You can see the big difference. Uh, the biggest thing that this does is put airflow into your tomatoes um, so you don't get those diseases and things, the water just sitting on your plants a lot. Uh, try not to water the leaves, just water the soil underneath the plants when you, when you uh, manually water them. Uh, don't use sprinkler systems. Try to use uh, circular hoses if you want to do automated um, or drip systems and uh, or just water by hand at the base of your plants. Don't water the leaves of your plants um, because it just, I know it rains on them and that's a natural thing, but the less water you can collect on those leaves, the better, especially on like cucumbers and uh, squash plants and stuff like that that are, are prone to powdery mildew. Um, Having water sit on your plants uh, isn't a good idea. I need to uh, strap that one up to my post so it doesn't get blown over. I'm surprised that the storms didn't break it already. So, um, all right, now on to part two of this video here. Uh, how to prevent and stay on top of blights and diseases and uh, funguses. Uh, what I use is... Um, a peroxide and water mix all right so I use um, some of these spray bottles here I got this one at uh, you know one of the box store um, you know uh, hardware stores or um, one of these you can get at the uh, you know cheap uh, dollar store kind of things um, and uh, you know you just pump them up get pressure and uh, I use 10 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. You just, in the brown bottle you buy at the store. Uh, 10 tablespoons to one gallon of uh, water, okay? Um, and uh, spray the tops and bottoms and stems all the way around of your tomatoes, your cucumbers, your squash, uh, zucchini, peppers, uh, anything that's prone to diseases, uh, you can do just about everything, really. Um, you don't really have to worry about onions and things like that. But uh, anything that's prone to diseases, spray tops, bottoms of your leaves and stems two times a week uh, and after every heavy rain. All right, and peroxide is a, uh, it's a carbon dioxide and, uh, it, it works with the light. So you have to do this when it's somewhat sunny, but not midday. You don't want to burn your plants up uh, with water sitting on them. Um, but I know I said not to put water on your plants, but this is a treatment and not a uh, just watering, okay? So this is a preventive measure um, to try to prevent you from getting blights and diseases. Uh, it's not as much of a cure, although if you do have just starting of blights it can get rid of it 
Um, but you need to uh, stay on top and be diligent on this process because if you slack on it is when that blight and these diseases will, will creep in. All right, uh, this is not my idea. I learned this um, from watching YouTube and um, uh, a fella named uh, Gary and he has a YouTube channel uh, called Rustic Garden. Uh, he's from Maryland, um, from where I'm originally from. And uh, he has a, a really great channel called Rustic Garden. And uh, he's very, very good at explaining um, his, his processes and his experiments that he's been doing for quite a while now. And he also has uh, updated videos on all this stuff. And, and new recipes and all that stuff so um, if you get a chance please check out Gary's page the rustic garden I'm gonna uh, I'll probably put a link uh, right up here and uh, I'll also put the link in the description um, below okay in the comments or description I'm sorry it'll be in the description and comments I'll put a comment with it in there as well so uh, there you go Gary I hope you see this man thanks for all the uh, videos I've learned a ton of stuff from you man and, and you know hope you're okay with me passing on your uh, your videos I'm definitely not taking credit for for your your stuff man so thank you um, so yeah try that peroxide mix on uh, just about everything it works man it really does work uh, it, sometimes that disease is just too powerful for it and you can also play with that mix do some more or do less um, if you're going to play with the mix just experiment on one plant before you do the whole garden that way if it doesn't work you don't kill all of your plants okay so it does work on cucumbers for rust spot and all that stuff as well um, but like i said i need to mulch this i haven't mulched it i've been lazy we've had a ton of rain uh, which ain't good that I haven't mulched it, but I come out here and spray all that stuff off with the hose and um, I treat it, you know, with this With this mixture here, so I'll just show you real quick how we do it. We just pump it up and um, It's pretty self-explanatory. All right, we're just gonna spray up underneath and This diatomaceous earth it's gonna be no good anymore after I do this but that's okay. You know, it's it's done its purpose already, and um, we don't even need it on there anymore. So we're gonna spray all up underneath, on top, get it all over the stems. All right, and the peroxide with the sun now, and the peroxide does not do this on its own. It needs the sun to react, and. Um, be able to kill bacteria peroxide is a natural fungicide it's a natural bacteria antibacterial another good thing about peroxide is that it's like a dollar a bottle okay and I mean you know if you got a big garden this does take a little time um, but uh, good gardening is time-consuming and um, you need to uh, you need to spend time in your garden to have success. Um, if you have a lot of uh, failure with gardening, um, try to look into uh, how much time you spend in the garden with your plants and um, checking them out. Okay, here's some strawberries. We'll go ahead and spray them down as well. Uh, my peppers, yep, I'll spray them. Spray it all in here. All right, watermelon. These are uh, sugar baby watermelons, so they grow pretty quick. I believe it's like maybe 90 days or maybe maybe four months. I don't know. But this is how we do it. Look, we got more watermelons just popping up. <laughs> there's, there's a ton of. I've already pulled a ton of them out of here. Um, there you go guys, it's the, uh, how to take care of your tomatoes, man, alright? It's just some, uh, upkeep, some pruning tips, and some, uh, bacterial infection fighting tips for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you know somebody growing tomatoes and having trouble, uh, link 
Send a link to this. Share it, please. Uh, if you have some other comments, if you've tried this method and you it doesn't work or it works, comment below. Let me know how you guys have done with this method. Um, I've been doing this for the last three years and it's worked very well for me. Um, and uh, yeah, if you guys have other ways, comment below, okay? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, let me know um, how you like this channel. We're, we're growing, I'm, I'm, I'm learning stuff every day. This channel is only about six or seven months old and uh, I've come a long way so far. So uh, appreciate you guys, I love you. We'll see you next, uh, next video, peace.